Hi, welcome to Beginning Engineers. Today I'm going to be talking about screws. That's right, screws. Most people are pretty familiar with them, but do you know more than just a few basic facts? Let's find out. So what is a screw? Technically, a screw is a type of fastener, a device that joins two objects together mechanically. So that just means it's not using an adhesive like glue, or it's not welding things together with heat or electricity or any other means. It's just joining things based on its shape, mechanically. Most people are pretty familiar with screws. Engineers should be especially so. Screws are known for their helical ridge. This is called the thread. We'll talk more about this in a minute. So what is the history of screws? Well, screws were most likely invented by famous Greek mathematician Archimedes in the 3rd century BC. Wooden screw presses were commonly used in the 1st century BC to extract oil from olives and crush grapes for wine. There's a good example of one on the right side of this slide. Metal screws the ones most of us think of when we hear the word screw, weren't really common until the 15th century in Europe. But they weren't that common yet because they couldn't easily be mass produced. Once the tools that enabled mass production were created, metal screws became much more commonplace in the 1760s and 1770s, and they've been around ever since. So let's get into some of the elements of screws. Believe it or not, there are all sorts of equations that define screw shape snugness of fit, type of screw, and many other elements. We will cover some of the more basic ones here. Most people are pretty familiar with the head of a screw. That's the top of the screw, the part that is engaged to turn the screw. The length, that's actually the distance from the bottom of the head to the opposite end of the screw. So it's not the total length, it's just the length of the thread typically. Then you have the major diameter, so that's the largest diameter on the screw, from the very edge of the thread to the other edge of the thread on the other side. I guess you could say the screw head would have the largest diameter, but when looking at just the thread part of the screw, it's going to be that largest diameter on there. So if you're looking at something called the thread profile, it's the height of that. So the crest of one thread to the other on the opposite side. A lot of times when you look at screws, you look at cross sections, and that's where thread comes in. And the thread is really where a lot of the complications with screw dimensions come in. Here are some important things about thread elements. Angle. That's the angle between the threads. 60 degrees is a common angle. So if you see on that image on the top right, that angle between each part of the thread is the thread angle. Then you have thread depth. That's the distance from the top of the thread to the outer edge of the screw core. The vertical distance between the crest and valley of the thread. So with that image on the top right, it'd be from the top of that flat area all the way down to the bottom of that valley. Measured vertically, so it's not a slanted measurement. Believe it or not, there are actually equations that use the thread angle and pitch to calculate thread depth. And what is pitch, you might ask? Pitch is the distance from one thread crest to another. Coarse threads have a larger pitch. The threads are spaced farther apart, making the screw more coarse. Think about any time you've touched something that's pretty rough. It's usually because it has well-defined, large and spread out features. Fine threads have a lower pitch. The distance between the threads is smaller and thus feels smoother. Think about a saw or gear that has a lot of teeth. Think about how smooth that feels. It's important to note too that coarse threads don't necessarily mean low quality and fine threads don't necessarily mean high quality. There's applications where you would want more coarse threads and applications where you would want more fine threads. The pitch of the screw is a main part of the naming structure used to identify screws. Pitch is also known as PD or D2. And that, along with the major and minor diameters, totally describe the thread of a screw. Threads per inch is like the name implies, the number of threads in an inch. This, of course, will vary based on the thread coarseness. People sometimes confuse this with pitch. I know I used to when I first learned about threads. So yes, there are standards out there for screws. 
Two of the more common ones are ISO, the International Organization for Standardization, which I have a great video on if you're curious about that, and UTS, Unified Thread Standards. ISO threads are used in most of the world and have an M designation. And when I say ISO threads, I don't mean the threads are any different, I simply mean that we call them different things, and the standard sizes vary. These standards help define, among many other things, the fit between a screw and the object it is being screwed into, the looseness of the fit. So using screw standards and thread descriptions to describe screws, you might say, hey, pass me that quarter 20. This means the major diameter is 0.25 inches, that quarter, and there are 20 threads per inch for a UNC thread, so that's the course. If you're talking an ISO screw, you might say, pass me that M6 by one. This is a metric screw, probably most similar to a quarter 20. It has a major diameter of about 6.8 millimeters and a pitch, that's that distance between the threads, of 1.27 millimeters. Many online parts providers have really great graphics and descriptions of these measurements. So if you really wanna see more about what do you call a lot of types of screws and what do they look like, just go to an online store and see some of their graphics. So we've defined a few ways that you can describe screws, but what are the different types? Well, here are a few of the general types. You've got drywall screws, used to attach drywall to studs in construction. Eye screws, screws with a large loop, usually used to hang things. Sheet metal screws, have sharp threads that can cut through metal. Security head screws, these are a fun one, I had never heard of these. Screws that are very difficult to reverse, typically used where theft or vandalism is a higher risk. So you could see the screw, but you can't really unturn it. This next one you hear about a lot in engineering, a set screw used to fix an item to a rotating shaft. Then in the most broad sense, a cap screw. These are the common ones that most people are familiar with. So it's not just technical terms and thread descriptions that you can use to define screws. There's very broad general families of screws as well. And screws have all sorts of purposes. So more than just the thread and general type, you have to be able to screw the screw into something. And that is all going to revolve around the heads and drives needed. So here are some common head types of screws, starting left to right and the top left, labels beneath. You have a pan head, a dome, also known as a button head, round head, a truss, also known as a mushroom, a flat, this is known as countersunk, and you can see that shape there. Just like a countersunk hole, a countersunk screw has that shape, whereas a counter bore would be more of a rectangular flat head. Then you have oval, also known as a raised head, and there's many more than this. These are just some of the common ones. Then on the right, you can see common drives. So that is the shape of the slot that you would engage to turn the screw. You have a basic slot type, also known as a flathead screw, Phillips, square, and hex that you might use a hex wrench with. There are so many more types of drives. These are just ones I saw a lot. So no screw video is complete without talking about a screw versus a bolt. And I figured I would end on that. Believe it or not, there is no set standard for the difference between a screw and a bolt. Both are types of fasteners. Although, it is generally true that a bolt will pass through a clearance hole and use a nut to hold the object together. Whereas a screw uses the tight tolerances between its thread and the object to actually hold the objects together. Bolts typically use nuts, screws don't need them. That's kind of the general accepted difference between them. Thank you so much for watching this video about screws. I hope you now know a little bit more about the things that help hold our world together. If you like this video, please subscribe. I try to do about a video a month. Have a great day.